Hey, welcome to my video. My name is Darcy Grantham. In this video, we're gonna go through 14 places that might be good for you to move to in Des Moines. Listen, I've been in your shoes. I've been in a situation where I've considered moving to an area and been completely confused on where exactly should I move to. So in this video, we're gonna go through the places in Des Moines that I have picked out that I think are really good options for you if you're looking to move to Des Moines. So let's go. For those of you that haven't been here, my name is Darson Grantham and on this YouTube channel, I put together information for people that are moving to or relocating to Des Moines. So if that is you, this channel is perfect for you. Subscribe, reach out. I'm here to help and do just give you some guidance on what it might look like to move to Des Moines. Yes, I'm a real estate agent. I help people buy and sell houses in Des Moines, but I put this channel together to help folks that are moving here or just in the area to get a better understanding of the Des Moines Metro. So we do everything there is from cost of living, from pros and cons, to what's the weather like, all of that can be found on this channel. So if that's you and that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. If you're like ready to move here and looking for houses, you can email me or shoot me a text below. That will get you in my inbox and we'll set up a Zoom call and you can pick my brain, grill me on why you should or shouldn't move to Des Moines. Or if you're trying to pick a location, a neighborhood, a community that might fit you perfectly or might not fit you, please reach out, I'm here to help. Before we get into the 14 different cities, if I was you and I was trying to think through where should I move in a city, there are four pieces that I think that you need to do to find that out before you go see the cities at all. One, you need to do your research. You need to know about the cities, how many people are renting, how many people are living, what's that median income, does it fit the lifestyle that you want, is it close to bike trails, is it close to daycare, is it close to shopping centers, what is important to you in your day, you need to do that research. Secondly, you need to visit the neighborhoods. You can watch these videos, you can read these blogs, you can do all of that, but to get a really good understanding of the area that you're moving to, you need to go drive the streets, walk the streets, visit the parks, talk to maybe a few people, maybe some neighbors in the general area that you're looking to move to. I actually help and tell my homeowners when they're looking to move into a new area, I say, hey, go knock on the neighbor's houses that are close to the house that you're going to be purchasing because they'll give you some insight on what they like about the neighborhood and what they don't like about the neighborhood. Because all of that stuff, as much as I would love to tell you that this channel covers all of that, it's really hard to do and I cover as much as I can, but it's not everything. So get some local boots on the ground, be there a little bit, be in the neighborhood and experience it. That will get you very comfortable to feeling where the best neighborhood might be for you. Consider your budget. And I say that because Des Moines has properties that are 200,000, that you would completely feel comfortable living in up to two, three, four million dollars. So where you're at in your budget is going to depend on a lot on where you're going to move in the city. Now, every city I would also argue has a $200,000 house and a couple million dollar house. Every city within the Des Moines Metro, you can have that scale. So if you're looking for a specific school district, we can find you an affordable house or place to live in that school district. Now, if you're looking at the couple million dollar range, even in some smaller communities, you can find those couple million dollar properties. You need to know what is your budget that'll direct where you're gonna buy within a certain city or community. And I can absolutely help you out with that. I do many videos on that here on this channel. And last but not least, you need to think about your lifestyle. Obviously, what you do in your day to day is going to impact where you're gonna live, where you're gonna commute, where you're gonna take your kids, where you're gonna grocery shop, where the kids are going to school, you go into the gym, bike trails, airport is a big one for those of you that travel. Maybe you're gonna work from home here, but you do have to jump on flights and travel quite a bit. You need to know how far it is away from the airport. Now we're gonna get into the 14 different communities. This is gonna be a high level of the 14 different cities. I am not going to do these in specific order. The first on my list is the East Village. Now, East Village is gonna have very, very few houses to live in, but it's gonna have a lot of condos, apartments, and it's gonna be walking commute anywhere downtown. So if you are looking for restaurants, coffee shops, boutique shopping, all of that is gonna be found in your East Village. It is on the east side of the downtown area. So if you're walking from the East Village downtown to the kind of the business center, I mean, you're gonna have a 10 minute walk. It's gonna be cold on those winter days, but you have mass transit system or you can just bike and, and jump on the bike lane and head right downtown. Next on the list is West Des Moines. West Des Moines is the second biggest city in Des Moines. You have Des Moines proper and then you have West Des Moines. Two different entities, different cities, but it is gonna be the biggest one. Couple high schools, many, many elementary schools. It's kind of spread out to the south, southwest of the Des Moines Metro. So if you're looking on a map, you're kind of looking down on the, the bottom left-hand side. There's a lot of business in West Des Moines. There's a lot of different communities throughout the West Des Moines areas. For me to say, hey, there's West Des Moines, and like this is the housing structure. You have you know two beds, three beds, whatever, or condos. Like there is something all across the board in that area. And a lot of single family houses, a lot of townhome condos, 
a lot of maybe single family home villas where you have an association that does pay for your snow and lawn care. So all of that can come in in your West Des Moines area. Downtown travel, you're looking at I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes if you're driving downtown, depending on where you're at, or where you're at in West Des Moines. Could be closer to 20 minutes, but most likely 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even five. Next on the list, we have Beaverdale. Beaverdale is a community, not necessarily a city, and so some of these will be that type of area. Most of it's in the Des Moines Public Schools school system and you're going to be kind of in the north, northwest. Beaverdale is kind of unique. They have a lot of like community celebrations. The thing that makes Beaverdale Fe Fall Festival so special is tradition, for sure. Tradition mixed with community. Today is the last day of the festival, but if you are looking to join in on the fun, it's not too late. There's live music and performances continuing throughout the evening. There's Beaverdale Facebook pages, a lot of older homes, a lot of brick homes. There's a couple streets in the city that are brick paved, which is really cool. And you, you drive down and you see, you know, Wow, it's a brick paved street. You just don't have that very much in the Des Moines area. Next on my list is Waukee. It's one of the fastest growing cities, I think in the country, but definitely in Iowa. Multiple high schools, and they've kind of split off multiple elementaries. There's schools getting built all the time. There's actually a vibrant music hall that was just built out there. So they're gonna get a lot of concerts, a very growing community. I wanna say it's the second or third biggest city in the metro. And so there's a lot of growth out west to Waukee. Next on the list is Urbandale. Urbandale is a really interesting mix of both residential and commercial buildings. Just due to how it's set out and how they've kind of annexed and zoned the city of Urbandale, there's the city of Urbandale High School, which is just one high school, and there are multiple elementaries and middle schools, but it has a lot of business also, a lot of commercial business, a lot of just smaller restaurant businesses within the city of Urbandale. So it's really interesting. If you look at the Des Moines Metro, and it's kind of like the corridor, it's kind of going to be your top right that's not outside of the interstate quite yet. And Urbandale, it does sprawl quite a bit. So you can get some new home builds in Urbandale, along with the homes that have been established since probably the 1960s is when they started building in Urbandale. Clive is next on the list. It's an interesting one. Clive doesn't have like, it's, there's not like a Clive celebration. There is a Clive library and a Clive pool. There's not like a city of Clive, meaning there's not a school district, right? I think it is percentage wise, the lowest tax rate on residential real estate. So if that's something you're looking at, you would find the lowest tax rate, I believe in the Clive area in Polk in Dallas County. It's also an interesting split between residential and business. It's got a bunch of both. And in some of the businesses, it's pretty big industrial businesses. It's spanning a large footprint on the Glybe area, intertwined with Urbandale and West Des Moines Waukee. Next on the list is Johnston. Johnston School District is kind of north, northwest, and so it's north of I-80, 35, and it's going to be a lot of larger acreages. There are some new builds too, and Grimes I guess is too, but it's a lot of single family. It's its own little community up north of Des Moines. Johnston to downtown, you're looking at a 25 to 30 minute drive. There's one road called Beaver Ave that takes you all the way downtown. And so a lot of people from Johnson are gonna drive that route all the way downtown if they are working. Now, Johnson to the airport is probably one of the longer commutes. If you're frequent at the airport and you're, you don't wanna commute over 30 minutes to the airport, Johnson might not quite be right. We did just go up there. There's like a, gosh, back pocket pins, I think it's called, back pocket brewery pins. So there's a brewery in Iowa that's from north northeast Iowa. They actually built a kind of a town center in the Johnson area. My wife and I went to it a couple days ago, actually. It was really, really cool. I was very impressed. Garage doors open on the summer days, and there's uh, little mini bowling areas and arcade games, tons of sports on TV, great restaurant, good gluten-free stuff that we enjoyed. So if that's interesting, that is the Johnston. Next on the list is Ankeny. And Ankeny is an interesting hub of both community and business and its own little city. They got a Costco. They're building a third high school. There is a massive expansion up north toward Ankeny and Ames. So Ankeny is one of those that if you're looking to move to Des Moines, Ankeny is most likely on the top of most folks list to just explore to, to learn more about. There's a really cool area in Ankeny called the District and has a lot of good just good food, good business, good activities and, and entertainment. So you have to check that out if you're looking at Ankeny. Next on the list is Pleasant Hill. Pleasant Hill, it's an underrated area. It's kind of on the east side, not quite to Altoona and it doesn't get a lot of accolades, although it's a really quick trip to downtown and a really quick trip to Altoona. They have Copper Creek Golf Course. So there's just a lot of stuff to go that's going on over there in Pleasant Hill. You're either going to go to the East High School or you're going to go to Southeast Polk High School and most likely in Pleasant Hill you're probably looking at Des Moines Independent East High Schools but you're really close to the fairgrounds so any events there, any events downtown, you're like a bike ride literally downhill to downtown so that's a great thing about Pleasant Hill. Next on the list is Norwalk. Norwalk is south of the city, south of the Des Moines Metro, about 20 minutes from downtown depending on where you're at in Norwalk. It's kind of split up. There's kind of new Norwalk and old Norwalk. New Norwalk's going to be nor your south southwest. A lot of new development, a lot of new builders are out there building a lot of affordable, you know, three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar homes, a lot of custom built homes that are five to seven hundred thousand dollars. Also, 
a big community center going in down there. So there's a lot of growth down in Norwalk. One thing I just struggle with Norwalk is the restaurant scene. There's just not a ton of restaurants, although you do have Jordan Creek, which is a 20 minute drive to Jordan Creek area where you're gonna have all the restaurants you're gonna want. And also downtown, again, 20, 25 minutes, all the restaurants you want. So if you're looking to commute, like be a bike or to a restaurant, Norwalk might not be the place for you, but I really like Norwalk. Next on the list we're gonna talk about is Grimes. Gonna keep this short and sweet. Grimes is kind of the north, northeast side of the metro. There's a lot of new builds out there. There's a city of Grimes, right, which is, is pretty small and quite frankly, older homes but there's just so much new development. Grimes has taken over a lot of the footprint in that northwest side of the metro. 141 is a highway that goes up that way, just got renovated, so the, the traffic up there, you used to take a long commute to drive to Grimes. Now with the better traffic patterns, it's looking really good. They also just got a new recplex up there, so a lot of sports activities that are happening up there and, and folks are traveling into town and you're staying in the Grimes area for that recplex for all the sporting activities. Unfortunately, with Grimes being in that side of the city, your travel and commute to the airport is the longest of probably all the cities that all the areas we've talked about so if you are commuting to the airport it's going to take longer if you're in Grimes than most other cities that you're going to be exploring. Next on the list is I got a little special place for me. I used to golf a lot. I haven't golfed much anymore since we had four kids that are all really young and they haven't quite got the grasping of golf yet at least that I feel comfortable taking to the course but this community is Glen Oaks. Glen Oaks is a private country club gated community. It's one of the probably top five luxury gated communities in the Des Moines metros. If you are looking for that kind of luxury living great I amenities of golf, of entertainment, the clubhouse, the restaurant, all on site, Glen Oaks might be a good place for you. You also have some affordable condo and townhomes in that area too. So if you are looking to have all those amenities but you don't want to spend the price tag of, of true single family home luxury living, there is options for you in, in the Glen Oaks area. That is also across the street from Jordan Creek Town Center area. So if that's interesting to you and you like that town center area, but you want the gated community feel, Glen Oaks would be a really, really prime opportunity for you. Second to last, we have Altoona. Altoona is the furthest east city that we're gonna be talking about. And the reason we have Altoona on there is because it is growing massively. We have Facebook data center, but there's a lot of industrial growth, a lot of new homes being built out there. They had at one point some of the best tax abatement programs in the Metro, meaning new builds would have a tax abatement for a certain period of years. So that all has is, is been booming in Altoona. The Southeast Polk School District is one that a lot of people have favored have wanted to put their kids into. Although it is the, the, the furthest east of all the cities that we've talked about, a lot of people really liked Altoona. Also have Prairie Meadows, which is a casino. You have Adventureland, which is the kids theme park. They're a water park with a swim up bar also. So if that's interesting to you, Altoona might be a good option. Again, houses all across the board in price ranges. And last but not least is the smallest town that we're gonna go through or go over today. And that's Adel. Adel is the furthest west city. It's further than Waukee and it is it's got a lot of new development and it also got a little pocket of old school, beautiful, historic, Victorian style houses. It is your typical small town brick road around the state, the county courthouse, a really cool, unique area in the western side of the metro. Adel down to the airport is probably your longest drive, even longer than Grimes, simply because it's so far out there. You're gonna be driving the interstate in, and I say so far, you're probably at a 40 minute drive to the airport. It's not that crazy, but then you're a good 10 minutes into Waukee, 20 minutes into a lot of shopping and whatnot, Sam's Club, Costco type stuff. So if you want that small town feel, but you want to be able to commute to the amenities of the big city, Adel and its Dell, DeSoto, Mindrum, ADM school districts might be a really good option for you. So that kind of wraps up the 14 places around the city that I think you might be interested in. At least that's the first 14 that come to my mind. So if that is interesting to you and you're looking for someone to help you move to the city, please reach out to me. My information is below email, text message. I'm happy to help out to just give you an idea of what community might be best for you.